Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. You're all welcome to Rathbury Church. As we come together to, I suppose, to celebrate, you could say, the life of John O'Leary, to give thanks to God for the gifts and blessings that he enjoyed in this world, and the gifts and blessings, I suppose, that we enjoyed through his many years. We're all here for a different reason, a different connection with John, a different relationship, a different friendship. Just for a few moments, let us bring to mind the reason we're here, our relationship, our friendship with John. Give thanks to God for that relationship and consider what each of us can bring to this funeral mass of farewell as we bid farewell to John Lowry. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, to through my fault, to through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, to all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy. Let us pray and let us bring to mind our own personal prayer for the soul of John before I say the official prayer of the Church. Father, you have called your son, John O'Leary, from this life to yourself. Fulfill his faith and hope in you and lead him safely home to heaven to be happy with you and with all the saints forever. And we ask this through Christ your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for our first reading. And I have Kevin up for the first reading. And Karen will do the psalm. And then Anne will do the second reading. They're all readings from the Bible and going back into history. As they show us, the readings show us basically how people of other ages view the passing from this life to God himself. If you would. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honourable, nor the number of years the true measure of life. Understanding this is man's grey hairs, untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he has achieved long life. His soul being pleasing to the Lord, he has taken him quickly. Yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection for his holy ones. The word of the Lord. And he will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you all in the palm of his hands. You shelter of the Lord who abide in his shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my 
his hands and as you in the palm of his hands a reading from the second letter of saint paul to timothy my life is already being poured away as a libation and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith, and there is to come now, all there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not, not only to me, but all those who have longed for his appearing. The Lord will rescue me from all evil attempts on me and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Gospel day from the Last Supper of Christ. He's leaving the disciples for the last time, but he makes them a promise that one day he will come back and take them with him. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in the Father. Trust also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If it were not, I would have told you so. I am going out to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared you a place, I will come back and take you with me, so that where I am, you also may be. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas turned to him and said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus replied, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. As we come together to celebrate John's life, was he, was he 95 or 97 or 98? Really. A good age, you would have to say, by any standards. And I guess we're here to say thanks to God for granting him all those years. And I suppose you could say he had good health fairly well up to the end. That, that um, you see some people, you know, get sick at an early age and live with chronic illness. And some people struggle to get out of this world, being sick the last few years. But you could say with John, he had many gifts and blessings, and to live with that age, and to live it in good health. He was strange in a way, he disappeared from here, from Ratbury, for months on end, and then suddenly one Sunday morning, I'd see him out there in the community, he'd pop up out of nowhere, tall, erect, and always with the story and uh, something to talk about when he'd be leaving church. Then again he'd disappear for a few months and suddenly again he'd appear as lively as ever, travelling all the ways from Cove. He had so many friends here in Ratbarry in the parish, Dartfield, in Cove, in Carrick Row, in England, Dublin, all places in between. I suppose John was a great person to make friends, travel. And you could say, I would like to say that he never met an enemy in his life. He was so friendly and so good at communicating with people. I would pick out, I'd say, two Two principles in his life 
two things that he really devoted himself to, the church. Church was very, very important to him. Most of his birthdays, he'd celebrate with Mass. And he'd get his favorite priest, Canon Keane, to say the Mass for him. I was never his favorite priest. I couldn't say Mass in Latin. And that was a terribly bad mark against me. I never did say Mass in Latin. I, I was ordained just after the Latin period. But for John, I think to be a genuine priest, you had to say Mass in Latin so that I was never invited to say Mass. But Canon Keane was his favorite priest. And the two of them got on so well together that I like to think when we think of what the next life is like and what heaven is like, that Canon Keane was there to welcome him home. And they talk about so many things. Canon Keane went to heaven, I suppose about a year ago, something like that, I suppose, preceded John by about a year. They got on with it and they have so much to talk about in heaven. And the gates of heaven, Canon introducing him to various people and they communicate. The church was one of the principles of John's life. And the other principle really was, I feel, Ireland, the history of Ireland, the country of Ireland, what, are, what to be Irish really meant. In my view, that was very, very important to him. Everything that made up us as an Irish nation, as an Irish race. He had those two principles in, in, in life, the church and the country, the nationality, our culture. And he lived them right out up to the very end. And I like to think that we're here today basically to say thanks to God for the gifts and blessings, but also to wish him well on his journey to eternity. We light the Easter candle to symbolize lighting his way into eternity. And we never quite know what happens after death, what happens at the gates of heaven. But I like to think that his parents, the O'Leary family going back through the generations were there at the gates of heaven to welcome him home and to wish him well and to introduce him to all the neighbours and friends in heaven. That when he got there, I like to think he'd have many stories to tell of all the people that had gone, that were here, still in this world, and were heading for heaven one day. I suppose every, every funeral we attend, I think we always lose something at a funeral. At this funeral, we lose the friendship of John O'Leary. We lose the companionship, the stories, that have, the history, the, the gatherings that we enjoyed with him. We lose that and it's gone forever. But then I think at every funeral also we attend, we gain something. Through our prayers and through our faith and through the life of John O'Leary, we gain some insight into the meaning of life, the meaning of death, the meaning of resurrection. And that through our prayers of this Mass, we leave here a slightly different people with a slightly different knowledge of death and resurrection and trying to understand the next world. The Gospel I've just read is from the Last Supper, where Christ is leaving the disciples for the last time. And just before he goes, he turns to them and says, one day I will come back and I'll take you with me. And I like to think somebody like John, when he goes, even though maybe not verbally, he's in mind, he turns to his friends, family, and to all those he knew in this world, saying to them the same thing, I'm going away. One day I will come back and take you with me. And let us pray during this Mass for John's eternal happiness, but also for ourselves, that when our time comes to leave this world, there will be somebody like John who will come back, put a hand on our shoulder, and help us across the great divide. Let us pray that God grants John eternal happiness 
and that he will, from heaven, assist us with his prayers. Please don't stand for the prayers of the faithful. Can I have Irene or Mary to, to do the, the prayers, if you would, Irene? Thank you. Father, we call you into our midst as we gather around your altar to celebrate this Last Supper. We ask that you listen to our prayers and grant them in accordance with your will. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. If you would. As we reflect on the contribution of John to his family, friends, and the wider community, let us remember him with affection. We thank you, God, for his long and full life, and we ask you now to bring him safely to his eternal home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. John was dearly loved by his family and friends. We ask you, Lord, to comfort those who mourn his passing from this life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. John is predeceased by his parents, James and Catherine O'Leary, his sister Mary and his brothers, Jim, Mick, Paddy, Dennis, Dan and Tim. We pray that they are now reunited and will all share eternal life with God in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We think of all the wonderful carers who supported John as he continued to live in his own home. Dr. Fitzgerald, the nurses, doctors, staff and volunteers at Cove Community Hospital, Cove Daycare Centre, the Mercy Hospital and South Infirmary. We pray that God may reward them for their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember in a special way all those who are unwell in hospital or in their homes. We pray that they, like John, will receive the love, care and support they need and that they may never feel forsaken by God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's bring to mind for a few moments our own personal prayer for the soul of John O'Leary. Lord, hear us. Father, these are the prayers we make as we come together for this funeral for your servant, John O'Leary. Bring him home to his eternal happiness in heaven with all the saints. And this we say through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the offered rain. Please pray that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, receive these gifts of bread and wine that we bring to your altar in memory of your servant, John O'Leary. May Christ be merciful in judging him, for he believed in Christ as his Lord and Saviour. And we say this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up 
your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful, ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawned. The sadness of death gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so, with all the angels and all the saints, we praise you forever as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted. He took bread and gave you thanks, Father. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. And may all of us who share in the body and the blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, Fintan, our Bishop, all the clergy and religious and people of the diocese. Remember your servant, John O'Leary, whom you have called from this life. In baptism he died with Christ, may he also now share his resurrection. Remember also, Lord, our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Let us pray together in the words Christ himself gave to each one of us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. We say the prayer of peace together. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Even though the rain hides the stars, even though the mist swirls
Please be seated for a few moments, Dennis and Tim. Are both of you going to say a few words, Dennis? If you would. Thank you. John was gregarious by nature and blessed with a large number of friends, young and old, and from many different walks of life. When John became your friend, you had acquired a friend for life. His legendary birthday parties in Dunmore House were regularly attended by friends he had made when in the guards and friends he had made when he worked in England, as well as those from this area that he had kept in touch with down through the decades. Having reached such a great age, it's not surprising that many of these friends had predeceased him. And yet, if it wasn't for the COVID-19 restrictions, we can be sure that the church would be packed for this funeral mass today. <coughs> he was his own man, a deep thinker who formed his own very strongly held opinions on what was important and on the people and institutions that govern our lives. We didn't always agree with him, but he loved a good argument and he vigorously defended his opinions. He had no time for pomposity and took pleasure in cutting the self-important down to size with his razor-sharp wit, as instanced by this anecdote. <clears throat> One day in Leicester, he went into a busy restaurant for a cup of tea. Another customer looking for a seat, asked if he might join him at his table. The Englishman, probably expecting to have fun with an unsophisticated Irishman, asked, well, Paddy, what do you think of the contraceptive pill? To which John replied, I have an open mind about it. I know the Catholic Church is not in favor of it, but now that I think about it, I can see that the use, its use could possibly occasionally benefit mankind. For instance, if your mother had taken one at the appropriate time, I wouldn't now be sitting here listening to this drivel. <coughs> His faith was strong and very dear to him. He was a traditional Catholic with a deep devotion to Our Lady. He was a frequent pilgrim to Medjugorje. It was important to him that his birthday party should start with a Mass. The Mass was said in Latin by his good friend, the late Canon Keane, and John made all the responses loudly and clearly in Latin. He was a proud Irishman with a great love for Ireland, for Irish history, and for the Irish language and culture. And he always wore the fauna or on his lapel. Begail gore shon. Vi arvasege don gailge. Slana walja jan. Er yeshte grogde hanum usul gailak. There's a few people we need to thank. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Joris Fitzgerald, who was a fantastic doctor and a friend of John's, and who went above and beyond to, to take care of John over many years in Cove. Um, the 
Commodore Hotel and staff where John would stay from time to time and was treated like family there. And he was always given the same room known as the O'Leary Suite um, where the, and where the staff went out of their way to make him feel very comfortable. The two girls here today, the, uh, Danielle Marr and Jessica Dorothy, these two girls were so kind to John and would run errands for him regularly and take him shopping and they were anything John needed, they were at his beck and call. <clears throat> to the people of Dawn View, where John lived, who showed John a lot of love and kindness over the last 24 years, and especially Jim Burke and Patrick Chippy and Carmel Keenan, who watched out for John at all times and made sure he was okay. Carmel in particular would call me if she saw anything wrong. Um, what a fantastic neighbour. <clears throat> the town of Cove is known for its beautiful cathedral, beautiful buildings, huge boats and harbours, but the town is only as strong as its people and the beautiful, kind and generous people of Cove who, uh, and, and, what make, and what make it uh, what, is what make it was make a town from the Commodore where John would stay from time to time the library where John would spend his afternoons and on one occasion um, the, the, the library was moved to the courthouse and John um, decided he'd take the judge the judge's quarters shall we say and uh, hold hold court there for, for an afternoon and uh, he also would keep you up to speed with uh, what was going on in the world by reading every paper that was there. And his Saturday morning's quiz with Doni, in Doni Manny's was all what made John so welcome and made him part of their community for the past 24 years and where he loved the living. In Pat, on Patrick's weekends, John would travel to England most Patrick's weekends and he would meet what he was called the Three Disciples. Lee, Paul and Nicky from Leicester and they would have a good time and also his great friends Wendy and Adrian. I'm sure they're, they're, they, be, they would be here this weekend or this day if, they were, um, if, if everything would be allowed. Lastly, I would like to thank uh, Father McCarthy. Um, Father, you mentioned um, the Gospel according to John. Maybe it was just as well, it was John's own Gospel. Okay. Um, to Charles Sullivan for fantastic professional service and especially to me all and Karen for the beautiful singing. Thank you all. Thanks very much, thanks Dennis. Appreciate those insights into the life of John. Thanks all for making his funeral mass for John and John's behalf to thank you all. Thanks me all and Karen. Thank you for the reading. The readings with Kevin and Anne and Irene and all those who had them had to make arrangements in the last few days. I think John would have been happy the way things went and would like to thank you all. Let us pray. Lord God, your son Jesus Christ gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us in our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May your servant, John O'Leary, who shared in the Eucharist in this life, come now to the banquet of eternal life Christ has prepared for us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our funeral mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. If you please stand for our final prayers of farewell. So long, my Saviour, sanctify my breast.
Once the Son received his soul and presented him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the side of Abraham. You and Lord, we commend the soul of your servant, John O'Leary. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, he lives forever. 
forgive, forgive whatever sins he may have committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. John, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our brother John has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's people in heaven, with faith and hope in eternal life that has assist him with our prayers. 
O God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, bless this grave and send your holy angels to watch over it. As we bury here the body of our brother John, deliver his soul from every bond of sin, that he may rejoice in you and with your saints forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Because God has chosen to call our brother John from this life to himself, we now commit his body to the earth from which it was made. For we are dust, and back into dust we shall return. May the Lord bless him and keep him. May the Lord make his face shine upon him and be gracious to him. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Lord, you raise the dead to life. Give our brother John eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to those who mourn and dry the tears of those who weep. Lord, hear us. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of John. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord, hear us. And we pray for all those who are buried in this cemetery. May their sufferings be lessened, may their joys be increased, and may the light of glory shine on them, and may they rest in peace. Normally we finish our prayers with a deck for the rosary because it's, it's quite cold, and there's a chilly breeze there. I'll just say one Hail Mary, and I'll ask you to say the, the deck of the rosary tonight before you go to bed. Say the deck of the rosary, asking God to grant resurrected happiness to the soul of John. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and may he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Charles, very much. Please get it. And like purples flash from green, and my soul is strangely led to the winding hills ahead, and she plays a melody on wind and sea for me. Won't you remember, won't you remember, won't you remember me? And we wind and climb and fall, like the greatest waltz of all. Float across the floor, her sweet breath outside the door. I still feel her spirit song. Across the silver tear 
won't you remember? Won't you remember? Won't you remember me? As I leave behind Nadine and the holes where we have been, rhododendrons in her hair, in the mountain scented air. And it's time that I was gone across the silver tear. Won't you remember? Won't you remember? Won't you remember me? Won't you remember? Won't you remember? Won't you remember me? For John.